What's going on? Welcome to Tech with Sean, and today we're playing some games on the newest, cheapest, current gen graphics card from AMD, the Radeon RX 6600 8GB. A couple things about performance to note before we jump in. The afterburner overlay says DDR4-3000, but I actually have it running at 3400MHz. I'm also recording with AMD Relive, Relive, whatever, and uh, I think it has a little bit more of a performance impact than Shadowplay does, so you could probably count on getting a couple more FPS than what you see in this recording. This card is made to compete against the RTX 3060 and really focuses on 1080p gaming and does a pretty decent job of it from what I've seen so far. Right here I'm playing a bot match in Halo Infinite, and I was on a 4K screen but I turned the resolution scaling down to 50% so it's rendering at 1080p, and I have the settings on high. And it kept it right around 60 frames per second. Of course it's always nice to have more frames if you can get them, but this is a really demanding new AAA game, and the RX 6600 is holding its own. Now let's shift gears over to Forza Horizon 5, and again this does a bang up job running it at 1080p. I'm running this at 1080p on high settings, except I changed the MSAA to FXAA, and running the benchmark it came in at almost 100 frames per second. There was some screen tearing though, and the frame rate was kinda all over the place, so I went ahead and locked it to 60 so I could record some stuff for y'all to watch. This is a really fun game though, it looks great at 1080p, you're not gonna have any problem when there's a lot of people on the screen, um, you know, different geometry, different effects, times of day, weather. The RX 6600 is going to be able to play a game like this no problem. It's got 8GB of VRAM, so you can actually turn the resolution up to 1440p if you want to, and it's going to still keep it over 60 frames per second most of the time. You may have to turn down just a couple of settings, but you will be able to with that 8GB of memory. While I was messing around with this, I actually set it for 4K, and then I turned the uh, resolution scaling to quality, and it kept it up at 60 frames per second even doing that here on the 6600, so even though this is aimed at 1080p, if you want to play some 1440p or 4K games on it, a lot of stuff is still going to be able to run on the 6600. You're just going to have to mess with maybe some settings or resolution scaling or something like that. This card was running pretty cool for a Radeon card too. You can see it's sitting, you know, between 70 and 75 degrees, and it's boosting up to about... 23, 2400 megahertz, so that's pretty decent. I haven't done any additional overclocking on the core. The VRAM is kind of weird on the RX 6600, so it's got like a hard cap on it to 1900 megahertz, and I think that's to differentiate the card from the RX 6600 XT, which goes a little faster on the memory. Inside Afterburner, I manually keyed in 1900 megahertz, and that was the highest it would let me go. But when you pull up the overlay in games, as you see here, it really reports in at 1890 MHz, and that's basically what I've seen it running at all the time. But yeah, for running Forza Horizon 5 at 1080p high settings, not a lot to complain about on this new card from AMD. Next up we got a game that is usually more associated with Nvidia cards, and we're taking a look at Cyberpunk 2077. This is one of the most intense games out right now, so we'll jump into the graphics settings and I'll show you that I'm running it at 1080p, no resolution scaling or anything, full screen, vSync off, and we're using the high preset, so no ray tracing, but the high preset still looks pretty good. Running around Night City, we're getting right around 60 frames per second. And again, this is with the re-live recording going on, so it would be probably a few more frames per second once you stop recording. This is totally fine for playing the game though, especially a game like this, you know, it's a slower paced RPG, especially if you have FreeSync or something on your monitor, that's not going to be a problem at all. You could lock the frame rate to 60 if you wanted it to feel a little smoother, but I wanted to show you what the performance was really doing. 120 watts is about the max that I've seen this card pull, and Cyberpunk is about the heaviest GPU load you can put on most cards these days, so what you're seeing here is probably indicative of the highest temperatures and power draw that you'll probably see on a setup like this. The boost clocks are really impressive, seeing it boost up over 2500 MHz as somebody who usually uses Nvidia cards, that seems crazy, like it's something you need water cooling or LN2 for. But that's pretty typical with these new AMD cards. 
Here I jumped into a car and for some reason I forgot what button switches the camera even though it's right in the bottom right corner of the screen and I was like tapping different buttons to try to get back to my right view. If you've ever tried driving in cockpit view in Cyberpunk it's crazy. It feels like the car is about 8 feet wide and I'm always running over everything. I gotta have that chase cam going on behind my car. For some reason, it's the same way for me with Forza Horizon 5 in those games. I have to have the external camera. But when I play other racing games like Gran Turismo, a lot of times then I use the bumper cam or the cockpit view, so maybe I'm just weird. But driving around still, um, that's a lot of the times in Cyberpunk when you see the frame rate really dive, and it still is holding, holding its own right here. So as long as you don't need super high resolution DLSS or ray tracing, you can have a fun, playable experience in Cyberpunk 2077, even on a card like the RX 6600. You don't have to have the most absolute high-end card to play something like this. Don't you hate it when you think that you can like run over something and you can't? This car is a freaking tank. I think that if you have some inertia behind you, you should be able to move a dumpster, but not in Night City. Maybe they have these things bolted into the ground or something. Freaking tweakers trying to steal them. The next game we're taking a look at, we got Red Dead Redemption 2, and this is a card that generally performs pretty well on the AMD Radeon cards. You can see here in the settings, I'm running this at 1440p, and we have most of the settings on high, medium, kind of a mix, but nothing really low. You want to keep it looking good without sacrificing too much of the look. But since Red Dead is so optimized for these Radeon cards, it means that we'll be able to push it at 1440p, and it looks really good, let me tell you. This is in San Denis at nighttime, and this is pretty much like the hardest part of the game to run. So you can see here that it's dipping below 60 just a little bit, and you know, if you were going to be in the city for a while, you could turn down a setting or two, but you'll see in a few minutes. Once you get out of this section of the game, when you're in the open world, it's going to be 60 pretty much all the time, and going to give you a really smooth experience, even at 1440p. This game looks great, I tell you what, it came out on the Xbox One last generation, but it still looks better than most other games out, really, almost anything besides like this in Cyberpunk. This still looks really good, it's up there with the best of them. Now we'll cut to a more open world section, and you can see here that that 60 frames is going to stay locked. Afterburner is saying that it's using a little over 6 gigs of VRAM. That may or may not be accurate, but having that 8 gigabyte buffer means that you will be able to play games at 1440p and stuff like this. You just may have to be conscious of the settings you're using uh, so that the core can keep up. There will be a few sections maybe where you get a, a few little dips. Here we have a lot of water going on and some different lighting effects so there is a little bit of a dip here but again nothing very major that impacts gameplay and if it really bothered you you could just drop a couple of the settings because it's only dropping to like you know 55 but if you're looking to play some RDR2 at 1440p or especially 1080p I think you'll be more than happy with the experience you'll get on the RX 6600 now finally, I wanted to run through a few benchmarks just uh, so you could get an idea how this performs in some other games. Ones that I don't necessarily play as much, but I have the benchmarks for them, so might as well throw them in here so you can check them out. This first one is Strange Brigade, and it's running at 1080p on the Ultra settings. This is kind of a more esports shooter game, and uh, the 6600 can push a high frame rate no problem on this. If you have a 1080p 144Hz monitor with FreeSync and you're wanting to play some esports types of games, this is probably going to be a great GPU if you can find one at a reasonable price. So it looks like it's doing a great job, no big lag spikes, keeping the frame rate up high. And it came in with an average of 155 frames per second at 1080p ultra settings. The next benchmark we have is Horizon Zero Dawn, and this is running at 1080p on the Favor Quality preset. This can actually be a pretty hard one to run, but this seems to be doing quite a good job, and you can see here it's, you know, over 80 frames per second, so that's plenty smooth for Horizon Zero Dawn. And skipping to the benchmark results, and we've got an average of exactly 90 frames per second, so you'll be getting almost exactly three times the frames that you would get on the PS4 playing it on the RX 6600. 
And finally, just so you can compare it to maybe some other cards, we got the good old standby. This is the Benchmark 3D Mark Time Spy. This is a DirectX 12 gaming benchmark. And here in the Time Spy results, we got a combined score of 8,302 with a graphic score of 8,440. So overall, I'm pretty impressed, I guess, with the RX 6600. You know, there's not a lot of cards coming out these days under $500, which sucks. But at the same time, this is way better than buying like a used 1660 or something off eBay for this price. Uh, this is a current card. It has 8 gigabytes of VRAM. It's going to let you play some stuff at higher resolutions. It's going to maybe get driver support longer. So if you can get one at a reasonable price and you want to game at 1080p, maybe play some older stuff at 1440p or 4k, then this is going to be a decent card for you. It's not going to be a replacement for something like a 3080. It's not going to be everything 4k max settings, but you really can't expect something like that with a card in this price point. Let me know what you thought about the performance of this RX 6600. Are you going to pick one up? If you do, drop a comment down below and let me know what you think of it, and I'll see you in the next video.